Hello and welcome to this Learn All Analysis video course on viscosity or fluid thickness. My name is Adam and I'm the manager of one of Europe's leading fluid analysis labs. Today's presentation will cover why viscosity is the most important property of a lubricating oil and why it is important to get the viscosity right when choosing a lubricant for your machinery. You will also learn how viscosity is measured, how it changes with temperature as a viscosity index and what the grading systems mean, such as an ISO VG32 or a 15W40. Finally, we'll finish on causes of low or high viscosity readings on an oil analysis support and how to address them. So let's start with what is viscosity. Viscosity is the thickness of a fluid and is the most important property of an oil, as it is what separates the two moving surfaces from contacting each other. It is usually the first property you would address when choosing a new lubricant and a lubricant can be too thick or thin. For instance, a too thick oil will take considerable energy to move, leading to high energy or fuel consumption and overheating, but wear will be less. Whilst a too thin oil will have a low fuel consumption, but metal to metal contact would be increased, leading to early component failures. Hence it is a balance in getting the viscosity that is neither too thick nor too thin. And as Goldilocks would say, is just right. Since viscosity is so important, it is a key test performed by a laboratory as part of an oil analysis. There are a few ways to measure viscosity, but the most widely used method is kinematic, i.e. measuring the time the fluid takes to get from one point to another under gravity at a set temperature. On the left is a viscometer bath in which several glass tubes with a zigzag shape are placed in a heated oil. The reason for the zigzag shape of this Huleon viscometer is to make the fluid have time to heat up to the same temperature as the surrounding bath fluid. The principle being, a thicker fluid will take longer to fall down the tube than a thinner one. Similar to how a soft drink is easier to drink with a straw than a thick milkshake. A thicker fluid is more resistant to flowing than a thinner fluid. Hence, the definition of viscosity is the resistance to flow. It is measured in millimetres squared per second i.e. the speed at which it passes through a specific viscometer tube. As the analyst pipettes the samples, you can see the oil droplet, represented by black dots, flow at different speeds dependent on their viscosity. Traditionally, the measurement is done by eye with a stopwatch, but most labs now use automated systems that automatically detect the flow rate. I have mentioned that viscosity measurement is done at certain temperatures. This is because viscosity is not fixed. It changes with temperature. You only need to think of putting your oil into a frying pan, how it goes more runny when heated. This change in viscosity with temperature is called a viscosity index, or a VI. It is measured using viscosity at 40 and 100 degrees Celsius. So why is all this important? Viscosity needs to be sufficient to separate surfaces at operating temperature, which for example in an engine could be around 95 degrees Celsius. Whereas at startup in winter, the oil could be very thick and gloopy, making the engine hard to start and also wasting energy whilst the oil warms up. A perfect viscosity oil would be one that stays at the same viscosity regardless, but this has not been achieved, but much progress has been made with additive technologies over the last few decades. For instance, traditionally an SAE grade 30 would be used for an engine oil to get the required thickness at operating temperature but with some energy wasted during startup, accepted as a result. High quality base oils do improve the VI, but additives that unfold during high temperatures to create additional resistance to flow give higher VIs by making a thinner oil appear thicker at higher temperatures. An example is a 15W40, in that at colder temperatures, hence the W for winter, the oil acts as a thinner 15W, but at higher temperatures, the oil acts as an SE40. When classifying oils, there are two viscosity classification systems, namely ISO and the SAE systems. The ISO system is simpler, so I'll explain that first. An ISO VG32 oil is 32 millimeters squared per second, plus or minus 10% at 40 degrees C, whilst an ISO VG46 is 46 plus or minus 10% at 40 degrees C. A 68 is 68 at 40 degrees C, etc. The SAE system is a little bit more complicated in that the boundaries between grades don't to be as sensible 
as the ISO system, and sometimes it just requires learning or using lookup tables like that to the right. The SAE system is measured at 100 degrees C for straight grades, e.g. 30, 40, 50, etc. Whilst multigrades, everything after the W is measured at 102. The bit before the W requires specialist instruments such as a cold cranking simulator not used routinely during oil analysis and beyond the scope of this presentation. A SA40, A15W40 or a 10W40, i.e. all those ending 40 when measured at 100 degrees C, need to be between 12.5 and 16.3, whilst everything ending 30 needs to be between 9.3 and 12.5. Reasons for viscosity being low are mixing with low viscosity products such as different oils or diesel fuel, whilst causes of high viscosity can be soot, mixing with thicker oils and oxidation. The potential results of wrong viscosity can be increased costs, overheating, component seizures and failures. Whilst ways to investigate highlighted abnormal viscosity including confirming oil grades in use, looking for seal leakages, injector leakages, confirming oil levels and top-up frequencies. Simply speaking to your lab, they will be able to advise you specifically how to handle this situation. Hopefully you feel more aware of viscosity in terms of oil analysis and testing, and I thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this presentation and would like to learn more, please visit my blog at learnoilanalysis.com. And if you'd like to take your very first sample, please click the links on the right to contact me on LinkedIn on how to start sampling.